Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada. Jayam Vishnu Pad Paramhamsa Parivraja Kacharya Ashrotar Shatar Shri Shrimati's Divine Grace Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri La Prabhu Pad Ki Jayam Vishnu Pad Paramhamsa Parivraja Kacharya Ashrotar Shatar Shri Shrimati's Divine Grace Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Shri La Prabhu Pad Ki Shri La Prabhu Pad Lila Amrit Ki Pandav Nirjaleka Dashi Mahotsav Ki All Glories to Assembly Uties All Glories to Assembly Uties All Glories to Assembly Uties All Glories All Glories All Glories to Shri Guru and Gauranga Hare Krishna. So today being a very auspicious day, especially today is a very special Ekadashi called Pandav Nirjal Ekadashi. So many devotees observe it by not even taking water. Hmm. And also on every Ekadashi we read from Srila Prabhupada's Leela Amrit. So we are re reading from Prabhupada Leela Amrit by Sasvarup Das Goswami Maharaj. Volume 1, How Can I Serve You? From which paragraph anybody remembers? <coughs> so this is page 72. However, it should be there like around 10 paragraphs ahead. O one of the Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's publication. Yeah, fine. So we'll start with prayers. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamahiyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Guru Nvaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Sha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tiramini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharini Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarini Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gauru Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna One of the Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's publication was in English The Harmonist and it advertised the Vrindavana Parikrama of 1932 Circumambulation of Shri Braj Mandal his Divine Grace Paramhams Shri Srimad Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Goswami Maharaj, the spiritual head of the Gaudiya Mat, Gaudiya Vaishnav community, following Shri Ch Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, has been pleased to invite the cooperation of all the persons of every nationality, irrespective of caste, creed, color, age, and sex, in the devotional function of circumambulation of Holy Spear of Braja in the footsteps of Shri Krishna Chaitanya who exhibited the Leela of performing the circumambulation of Sri Braj Mandal during the year, during the winter of 1514 AD. When Abai heard <coughs> from the members of the Allahabad Gaudiya Mat about the Parikrama, he had been fully occupied with his local Prayag pharmacy business and traveling to secure new accounts. But he had calculated how he could join at least for a day or two and he had fixed his mind on 
again obtaining the darshan of Srila Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati. <coughs> so even though Srila Prabhupada was busy with his business, he still tries to make a plan that he should visit a holy place and hear from the holy persons, especially when Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati Maharaj, his own spiritual master, is taking that parikrama. Srila Prabhupada, I was not initiated at that time of the parikrama, but I had a very good admiration for those Gaudiya Mat people. They were very kind to me, so I thought, what are these people doing in this parikrama? Let me go. So I met them at Koshi. The parikrama party travelled with efficient organisation. An advanced group bringing all the bedding and tents would go ahead to the next day's location where they would make camp and set up kitchen. Meanwhile, the main party bearing the deity of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and accompanied by Kirtan singers would visit the places of Lord Krishna's pastime and in the evening arrive in camp. Mm -hmm. So it looks like this advanced party, mm -hmm. this is actually a parampara when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also used to travel. There was a devotee, his name was Shivanan Sen. Uh, he used to do the advanced party going and arranging for devotees to travel because that time devotees used to travel from Mayapur to Jagannath Puri. Shri Shri Radha Madhav Bhagavan ki, Shri Shri Gornitai ki, Shri Shri Jagannath Baldev Subhadra Mai ki. So Shivanan Sen used to make arrangement for all the devotees wherever, where they will stop, where they will get prasadam, where they will stay because that time there were not trains and people coming from Mayapur to Jagannath Puri used to mainly walk through the entire track of that land. So following in that footsteps idea, Bhakti Siddhan Sarsi Maharaj also used to arrange yatras uh, for people to come reside there. And there was an advance party to take care of uh, kitchen and other uh, paraphernalia. The camp was divided in sections and arranged in semicircle. All the pilgrims and pilgrims were assigned to a particular section for the night. In the center were the quarters of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta and the deity of Lord Chaitanya and close by the tents of the sannyasis. I don't know how many of you have travelled to this Gaur Mandal Parikrama which ISKCON organises every Gaur Purnima like one or two weeks before. Nobody has been there? Hmm? So you can get a glimpse of how the tents are arranged and devotees are uh, you know, arranging that yatra. There was also a volunteer Cops of guards who stayed up all night patrolling the area. At night, the camp with its hundreds of tents with gas lights and campfires resembled a small town, and local people would come to see, astonished at the arrangements. In the evening, everyone would gather to hear a discourse from Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Maharaj. The pilgrims would rise early in the morning and chant Hare Krishna together. Then carrying the deity of Lord Chaitanya, they would set out in procession, Kirtan groups, the police band, the lead horse, the flag bearers and all the pilgrims. They travelled to the holy places, the birthplace of Lord Krishna, the place where Lord Krishna slew Kamsa, the Adi Keshav temple, Radha Kun, Sham Kun and many others. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a very wonderful experience to visit with experienced devotees all these various places where they can reveal these pastimes of Lord in those places. Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati's massive pilgrim, pilgrimage had been rolling on with great success when he met with serious opposition. The local temple proprietors in Vrindavan objected to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta's awarding the sacred Brahman thread to devotees not born in families of Brahmanas. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, throughout his lecture and writings, had repeatedly proven from the Vedic scriptures that one is Brahmana, not by birth, but by qualities. He often cited a verse from Sanatan Goswami's Hari Bhakti Vilas, stating that, just as base metal, when mixed with mercury, can become gold, so an ordinary man can become a Brahmana if initiated by bona fide spiritual master. He also often cited a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam in which the great sage Narada tells King Yudhishthira 
that if one, one is born in the family of Shudra, but acts as a Brahmana, he has to be accepted as a Brahmana. And if one is born in a family of Brahmana, but acts as a Shudra, he is considered as a Shudra. Because the prime method of spiritual advancement in the age of Kali is by chanting the holy name of the Lord, any person who chants Hare Krishna should be recognized as a saintly person. Mm -hmm. So in those times, and even to some extent now, there is an objection for the people if somebody is initiated as Brahmana. Mm -hmm. Even now in some places in Kerala, if you go, if somebody sees that somebody is being initiated as Brahmana but not born in Brahmana family, they will have an objection because there is so much of caste consciousness. When the local pandits approached Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati for discussion, they questioned his leniency in giving initiation and his awarding the Brahmanical thread and sannyas dress to the persons of lower caste. Because of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's scholarly forceful presentation, the pandits seemed satisfied by the discussion. But when the Parikrama arrived at Vrindavan's seven main temples, which had been erected by the immediate followers of Lord Chaitanya, the party found the doors closed. Hmm, surprising, huh? Vrindavan shopkeepers closed their business and some people even threw stones at, the pas stones at passing pilgrims. But the Parikrama party led by Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati continued in good spirit despite the animosity and on October 28th, the party arrived at Koshi, the site of treasury of Krishna's father, King Nanda. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like too much of uh, caste consciousness. Mm -hmm. Of course, now you don't find such things now. You go to Vrindavan, you'll see so many Westerners coming and participating in Krishna's uh, Karthik Vrata. Mm -hmm. But at those days, it seems to be very, very difficult. And the date October 28 suggests that it must be the Karthik month in which Bhakti Siddhan Srasri Maharaj is leading this Parikrama. Mm -hmm. Fortunately now it is not so much in Vrindavan. You can go, many people even though they are Westerners, uh, they can come and at least visit the temples. Mm -hmm. Not that the temples are closed. Mm. Even now only for the Westerners we find Jagannath Puri temple being closed quite difficult. The people from western bodies, if they look like western bodies, they can't go into the Jagannath Puri temple. Mm -hmm. Abhai arrived in Mathura by train from Allahabad mm -hmm. and approached Kosi in rickshaw. The countryside was full of sham for Abhai. Instead of factories and large buildings, there were mostly forests and aside from the main paved road on which he travelled, there were only dirt roads and soft sand lanes. As a Vaishnava, Abhay felt sensations an ordinary man wouldn't. Now and then he sighted a peacock in the field, its exotic plume, plumage proclaiming the glories of Vrindavan and Krishna. Even a non-devotee, however, could appreciate many varieties of birds, their interestingly cries and songs filling the air. Occasionally a tree would be filled with madly chirping sparrows, making their urgent twilight clamor before resting of the night. Even one aware of the special significance of Vrindavan could feel a relief of mind in this simple courtyard, co countryside, where people build fires from cow dung manure fuel and cooked their evening meals in open, their fires adding rich natural smells of indefinable mixtures which was the odor of earth. There were many gnared old trees and colorful sketches of flowers, bush bushes of bright violent camellia, trees abloom and with delicate white parijata blossoms and big yellow kadamba flowers rarely seen outside Vrindavan. Hmm? This is the sight of Vrindavan in those days. Hmm? On the road, there was lively horse-drawn Tonga traffic. The month of Karthik, October-November, was one of the several times of the year that drew many pilgrims to Vrindavan. The one-horse Tongas carried large families, 
some coming from hundreds of miles away. Larger band of pilgrims grouped by village walked together. The women dressed in bright colored saris, brown skinned men and women sometimes singing bhajans. Carrying but a few sam simple procession as they head headed for the town of thousands of temples Vrindavan. And there were businessmen like Abhay dressed more formally coming from a city maybe to spend the weekend. Most of them had at least some semblance of a religious motive to see Krishna in the temple, the bathe the, to bathe in the holy Yamuna river, to visit the sites where Krishna had performed his pastimes such as lifting of the Govardhan, the killing of Keshi demon or the dancing in the evening with the gopis. Hmm? So even now when we go to Vrindavan in the Karthik, it's hugely crowded. Hmm? Now even to take a four-wheeler inside the main roads becomes very, very difficult. Hmm? But at those days, people used to go in horse tangas. Hmm? Now, Hare. Hare Krishna. Now you might not be able to see horse tangas. Very, very few horse tangas you can see in Vrindavan now. Only when you go to that Radha Madan Mohan temple on the back side where you can see it right up Yamuna, you'll see few horse tangas. <coughs> Abhay was sensitive to the atmosphere of Vrindavan and he noted the activity along the road. But more than that, he cherished with anticipation the fulfillment of his journey, his meeting again. After a long separation, the saintly person he had always thought of within himself, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati, who had spoken to him in Calcutta and had convinced him about Lord Chaitanya's mission to preach Krishna consciousness. Abhai would soon see him again and this purpose filled his mind. Hmm. So in those days there were not many uh, modes of communication uh, other than post office. Hmm. So even when you write a letter, when the letter reaches the person, you don't get an acknowledgement saying that the letter has been reached that person, unless there is another letter which comes back as an acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. So very less time Srila Prabhupada had interactions with Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Maharaj. Mm -hmm. And to meet in person uh, was a cherishment. Mm -hmm. These days with uh, a technological advancement, uh, meeting a person does not give so much of cherishment because already you see a person live on YouTube or you have a video call interaction like that. Mm -hmm. But at least in those days, meeting a person was like a cherishment, the person whom you love. Upon reaching the lantern illuminated camp of Gaudiya Mart and inquiring at the registration post, he was allowed to join the Parikrama village. He was assigned a tent of Grahasa men and was offered prasadam. The people were friendly and in good spirit and Abhai talked of his activities with the Matha members in Calcutta and Allahabad. Then there was a gathering, a sannyasi was making an announcement. This evening, he said, there would be a scheduled visit to the nearby temple to see the deity of Sheshasai Vishnu. Some of the pilgrims cherished, Hari Bol, Hare Krishna. The sannyasi announced that his divine grace, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Maharaj, would speak at the evening for the last time and would be leaving the Parikrama party the next day. So there was a choice of going on the parikrama or staying for the lecture. Hmm? So how many of you will choose staying on the parikrama and hearing Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj or going and seeing the deity of Shesha Sai Vishnu? How many of you will choose hearing from Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj? Evil. <laughs> okay, good, dear. Yeah. Srila Prabhupada, so I met him in Koshi and Kesha Maharaj was informing that Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj is going to Mathura tomorrow morning and he will speak Harikatha this evening. Anyone wants to may, may remain or others otherwise may go to see Shesha Sai Vishnu. So at that time I think only 10 or 12 men remained. Sridhar Maharaj was one of them and I thought it is wise. What can I see at this Shesha Sai? Let me hear what Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati will speak, let me hear. Hmm. So when Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj came out and gave lecture, he noted that Srila Prabhupada was there in the lecture. Hmm. 
And after few years, uh, when uh, some of the Gaudiya Met members recommended Abhay Charande for initiation, Bhakti Siddhan Sarasimara said that this person is interested in hearing. And yes, I will give him initiation. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the criteria of anybody who would like to get initiated. Mm -hmm. He should be interested in hearing mm -hmm. from the spiritual master. Mm -hmm. When Abhay arrived, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta was already speaking. He sat with his back erect, a shawl around his shoulders, not speaking like a professional lecturer giving a scheduled performance, but addressing a small gathering in his room. At last, Abhay was in his presence again. Abhay marveled to see him and hear from him. This unique soul possessed the Krishna Katha, speaking uninterruptedly about Krishna in his deep, low voice, in ecstasy and deep knowledge, Abhay sat and heard with rapt attention. Hmm. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati had been speaking regularly about Sambandha, Abhideya and Prayojana. Sambandha is a stage of devotional service in which the awareness of the God is awakened. Abhideya is rendering the loving service to the Lord and Prayojan is ultimate goal, pure love of God. He stressed that his explanation were in exact recapitulation of what he originally had been spoken by Krishna and passed down through disciplic succession. Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati's particular utterance, mostly Bengali but sometimes English, with frequent quoting of Sanskrit from the Shastras, was, de was deep with erudition. It's Krishna, said Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Maharaj, who is the only super lord over the entire universe and beyond it of Vaikuntha, the transcendental region. As such, no one can raise any obstacle against his enjoyment. An hour went by, two hours. The already small gathering in the Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati room gradually thinned. A few sannyasis left, excusing themselves to tend the duties connected with the Parikrama camp. Only a few intimate leaders remained. Abhay was the only outsider. Of course, he was a devotee, not an outsider, but in the sense that he was not a sannyasi, was not handling any duties, was not even initiated, and was not traveling with the Parikrama, but had joined only for a day. In that sense, he was an outsider. The philosophy Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati was speaking, however, was democratically open to whoever would give an ardent hearing. And that was, and that Abhay was doing. Hmm. So actually in Krishna consciousness, if we hear very carefully, the, pa the process of Krishna consciousness becomes very, very joyful. Hmm. But when we don't hear carefully from our spiritual master and guides, we start speculating. We think that maybe something else is what is beneficial for me. He was listening with wonder. Sometimes he would not even understand something, but he would go on listening intently, submissively. His intelligence drinking in the words, he felt Srila Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati revealing to him the direct vision of spiritual world. Just as a person reveals something by opening a door or pushing aside a curtain, he was revealing the reality and this reality was loving service to the lotus feet of Radha Krishna the supreme worshipable personality of Godhead. How masterfully he spoke and with utter conviction and boldness. <clears throat> it was with such awe that Abhay listened with fastened attention. Of course, all the Vaishnava accepted Krishna as worshipable Lord, but how conclusively and with what sound logic was the faith of Vaishnavas established by the great teacher after several hours, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati stopped speaking. Abhay felt prepared to go on listening <coughs> without cessation, and yet he had no puzzling doubts or queries to place forward. He wanted only to hear more. As Srila Bhakti Siddhanta made his exit, Abhay bowed, offering his obeisances, and then left the intimate circle of sannyasis in their row of tents and went to the outside circle of tents his mind surcharged with the words of his spiritual master. Hmm. So Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Maharaj 
organizing the yatras one of the purpose of organizing the yatras is to uh, give the philosophy of krishna consciousness hmm? sometimes when we are in regular course of action the hearing the past times of the lord may not be so attentive hmm? but when we give up everything our regular course of activities and we go and sit in a holy place hmm? like vrindavan or the holy rivers bank of the holy rivers the attention is very very uh, great hmm? so although prabhupad was not very uh, for prabhupad was not very easy to make up his schedule but he at least made that i would hear for that one day hmm? and imagine shila prabhupad is cherishing that one day entire his life in 1932 he heard, he heard this lecture and probably when he is speaking about uh, his this past time it will be 1968 or 69 and he still remembers can you imagine 38 39 years old instance he remembers and recollects that this is what has happened hmm? so hearing from great saintly persons can have that influence now their relationship seemed more tangible <coughs> he still treasured his original impression of shila bhakti siddhan saraswati maharaj the saintly person who had spoken to him on the rooftop in kolkata but tonight that single impression that he had sustained for many years in allahabad had been enriched and filled with new life his spiritual master and the impression of his words were very much as a reality as stars in the sky and the moon over vrindavan that impression of hearing from shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati was filling him with its reality and all other reality was forming itself around the absolute reality of shila gurudev just as the planets circle around the sun the next morning <coughs> abhay was up with other more than an hour before dawn bathed and chanting the mantras in congregation later in the morning the tall stately figure of shila bhakti siddhan saraswati dressed in plain saffron got into the back seat of the car and rode away from the camp thoughtful and grave he looked back and waved <coughs> accepting the loving farewell gestures of his followers abhay stood amongst them a little more than a month abhay was again anticipating an imminent meeting with shila bhakti siddhan saraswati this time at allahabad abhay had only recently returned from vrindavan to his work at prayag pharmacy when the devotees at the allahabad gaudiyamat informed him of the good news they secured the land and funds for constructing a building Shri Rupa Gaudiya Math and Shila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Maharaj would be coming on November 21st to preside over the ceremony for laying the cornerstone. Sir William Macklemy Haley, Governor of the United Provinces, would be respected guest, and in the grand ceremony would lay the foundation stone in the presence of Shila Bhakti Siddhan Ta. When Abhay learnt that there would also be an initiation ceremony. he asked if he could be initiated atul anand the mathas president assured abhay that he would introduce him to shila bhakti siddhan saraswati <coughs> at home abhay discussed his initiation plans with his wife hmm? she had no objection but she did not want to take initiation herself they were already worshiping the deity at the home and offering their food to the deity they believed in the god and were living peacefully but for abhay it was not enough although he would not force his wife he knew that he must be initiated by a pure devotee avoiding sinful life living piously these things were necessary and good but in themselves they did not constitute spiritual life and could not satisfy the earning of the soul life's ultimate goal and absolute necessity of the self was love of krishna that love of krishna his father had already <coughs> inculcated within him and now he had to take that next step his father would be pleased to see him do it what he had learned from his father was now becoming solidified by someone capable of guiding all the fallen souls of the world the transcendental love of god 
Abhay knew he should go forward and take complete shelter in the instructions of his spiritual master. And the scriptures enjoined, he who is desirous of knowing the absolute truth must take shelter of a spiritual master who is in disciplic succession and who is fixed in Krishna consciousness. Even Lord Chaitanya, who was Krishna himself, accepted a spiritual master and only after initiation he could manifest the full symptoms of ecstatic love for Krishna while chanting the holy name. <coughs> As for the ritual initiation he had received at the age of 12 from a family priest, Abhay had never taken it very seriously. It had been a religious formality. But a guru was not a mere officiating ritualistic priest. So Abhay had rejected that the idea he had already a guru. He never received instructions from him in bhakti and his family guru had not linked him through disciplic succession with Krishna. <coughs> so the officiating priest uh, generally are interested in that ritual and after taking a good handsome donation from the participant of the yajna, the officiating priest leaves. Many of the Indian born people have this experience. Mm -hmm. Even for me, we had an officiating priest. On that day of initiation, he performed some rituals and he is not interested in what that disciple is going to do further. Mm -hmm. No instructions given. Mm -hmm. But by taking initiation from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he would be linked with Krishna. Mm -hmm. Bhakti Siddhanta, son of Bhakti Vinod Thakur and the disciple of Gaur Kishordas Babaji, was the guru in 12th disciplic generation from Lord Chaitanya. He was the foremost of Vedic scholar of the age and expert Vaishnava who could guide him back to Godhead. He was empowered by the predecessors to work for his highest welfare by giving everyone Krishna consciousness. The remedy for all sufferings, Abhay felt that he had already accepted Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati as his spiritual master and that their very first meeting he had already received his orders. Now if Srila Bhakti Siddhanta would accept him as disciple, the relationship would be confirmed. <coughs> he was coming soon after Abhay had seen and heard him in Vrindavan. That was how Krishna acted through his representative. He was as if his spiritual master in coming to where Abhay had his family and business was coming to draw him further into spiritual life without Abhay's having attempt to bring him, bring it to about. His relationship with Shla Bhakti Siddhanta was deepening. Now Shla Bhakti Siddhanta was coming to him as if by an higher arrangement. Mm -hmm. On the day of ceremony, <coughs> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati met his disciples at Allahabad Gaudiya Math on the South Malakka Street. While he was speaking Harikatha and talking questions, Atulanand Brahmachari took the opportunity to present several devotees, Abhay amongst them, as candidates for initiation. The Allahabad devotees were proud of Mr. Day, who regularly attended the Matha in the evening and led bhajans, listening to the teachings and spoke, to, spoke them himself, and often brought respectable guests. He had contributed money and had induced his business colleague also to do so. With folded palms, Abhay looked, at the hum, uh, looked up humbly at his spiritual master. He and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta were now face to face, and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta recognized him and very visibly pleased to see him. He already knew, yes, he said, exchanging looks with Abhay, he likes to hear. He does not go away. I have marked him. I will accept him as disciple. Mm -hmm. So this is the sign of you know, uh, a sincere disciple and a very, very qualified spiritual master. Mm -hmm. A spiritual master also should be very, very pleased to see that his disciple is interested in hearing. Mm -hmm. There are so many activities in Krishna consciousness. There can be fundraising, there can be book distribution, there can be temple construction, management, cooking and various things. But of all these, the spiritual master should be more interested in whether the candidate is interested in hearing. Hmm. 
Of course, by telling that the other services does not become less important, uh, we can do all the services along with the hearing. Mm, that is what is the skill of Krishna consciousness, skill of a devotee in Krishna consciousness. As the moment and the words become impressed into the, uh, his being, Abhay was in ecstasy. Mm. Atulanand was pleasantly surprised that his Gurudev was already in approval of Mr. Day. Other disciples in the room were also pleased to witness La Bhakti Siddhanta's immediate acceptance of Mr. Day and a good listener. Some of them wondered when and where Shla Bhakti Siddhanta had arrived such an estimation of a young pharmacist. At the initiation, Shla Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was seated on a Vyasasan and the room was filled with guests and members of Gaudiya Mat. Those to be initiated sat around a small mat of mound of earth where one of Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati's sannyasis prepared a fire and offered grains and fruits into the flames while everyone chanted the mantras for purification. Abhay's sister and brother were present but not his wife. Hmm? There are some photographs of Prabhupada with his sister. Uh, Prabhupada's sister also was had come to Mumbai when Prabhupada was in Juhu temple. And there were so many exchanges with Prabhupada's and Prabhupada's sister. Mm. So Prabhupada's sister, I am not remembering her name. Huh? Bhavatarini. Yeah. So she was also a very great devotee and she was very happy with Prabhupada's achievements, Prabhupada's preaching of Krishna consciousness. So when Prabhupada was in India, sometimes her sister used to come and meet Prabhupada and she was very happy in cooking and feeding Prabhupada. So Prabhupada used to like uh, her sister cooking for her, him. So Prabhupada's sister was there, brother was there, but not his wife. Hmm? So his wife is making a clear statement of what she is like. I am not interested in my husband's spiritual in advancement, nor my spiritual advancement, nor my husband's spiritual advancement. Hmm? Abhay basked <coughs> in the presence of Gurudev, yes, he likes to hear. The words of his spiritual master and his glance of recognition had remained with Abhay. <coughs> Abhay would continue pleasing his spiritual master by hearing well. Then he thought, I will be able to speak well. Mm -hmm. The Vedic literature described nine processes of devotional service, first of which was Shravanam, hearing about Krishna, then came Kirtanam, chanting about and glorifying him. By sitting patiently and hearing at Kosi, he had presented Krishna's representative, and when Krishna's representative was pleased, Krishna was pleased. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati had not praised him for donating money to the Matha and hadn't advised him to forsake his family and business and travel with him. Nor he had asked Abhay to perform great austerities like yogis and mortify their bodies and fast and difficult vows. But he likes to hear, he had said, I have marked him. Abhay thought about it and again listened carefully as spiritual master conducted the initiation. Mm -hmm. So this is the quality of relationship between the disciple and spiritual master. Mm -hmm. And any time when a disciple meets his spiritual master, he should always ask a question. Hmm? What is that question? How shall I serve you? The title of this chapter. Hmm? And one should be interested in hearing from spiritual master. Hmm? So that is the best quality of a disciple and Prabhupada is showing how a disciple should be. Hmm? And Prabhupada shows that even if your family members, the direct family members may not be interested in Krishna consciousness, but still you should go on. Like Prabhupada's wife was not interested. Still Prabhupada went on uh, taking Krishna consciousness seriously. So this is good for today's discussion on Srila Prabhupada's Lilamrit. And every Ekadashi will continue reading. We can just mark here. And the initiation ceremony will be the next reading. So thank you all very much for giving your time and attention for Srila Prabhupada's Lilamrit. Srila Prabhupada ki, Shri Shri Radha Madhav Bhagavan ki, Shri Shri Gaur ki, Jagannath Baldev Subhutra Mai ki, Srila Prabhupada ki.